Why is Washington always engulfed by scandal? Whether Democrats are in charge or Republicans are in charge, it's hard to open a newspaper or watch the news without being bombarded by more evidence of venal behavior and corrupt antics. This is true today, but it was true a couple of years ago and in previous decades. But the crimes that make the news are just the tip of the iceberg. A left-wing columnist famously noted years ago that the real scandal in the nation's capital is not what's illegal, but what's legal. Influence peddling, favor swapping, and back scratching. These are art forms in Washington, as politicians, lobbyists, and interest groups exist in a symbiotic relationship. I'm Dan Mitchell of the Cato Institute. In this short video from the Center for Freedom and Prosperity, we are going to examine the traditional way of trying to control Washington corruption, and then we're going to suggest an alternative approach. Let's look first at the standard Washington answer to sleaze. As you see on the screen, politicians respond to corruption by enacting more laws. We get more ethics laws, more campaign finance laws, and more lobbying laws. And the politicians want us to believe that each one of these new laws will finally clean up Washington. Yet nothing ever seems to change. Why is it that these laws do not seem to have much impact? I would like you to consider an alternative hypothesis. Maybe, just maybe, the reason we have so much corruption is that government is so big and politicians have so much power to redistribute. The federal government, for instance, is going to spend about $3.5 trillion this year. That's an enormous amount of money, more than $45,000 for every family of four in America. Should we be surprised, therefore, that hordes of special interests descend on Washington like locusts, figuring out ways to get a cut of the action? These interest groups are jockeying for more welfare, foreign aid, bailout money, bridges to nowhere, artist handouts, income redistribution, health care subsidies, and military contracts, to name just a few. But whatever they are looking for, the key thing to understand is that the massive size of government creates opportunities for corruption. There have always been lobbyists in D.C., and there's always been some corruption, but the number of lobbyists has grown, and the extent of corruption has increased as the size of government has expanded. Imagine if we still had the type of federal government our founding fathers envisioned. How many lobbyists and scam artists would there be in Washington if the federal government was collecting and redistributing less than 5% of economic output, which was the case for much of our nation's history? Today, by contrast, the federal government alone redistributes nearly 25% of our economy's output. And that's just spending. Let's not forget that government intervention and regulation create additional opportunities for corruption and malfeasance. Many interest groups, for instance, seek unearned wealth by convincing politicians to provide special rules and other forms of favoritism. Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac are examples of how sleazy insider dealing can be pervasive and remain, at least until recently, completely separate from budgetary debates. The tax code, that's another sandbox for both legal and illegal corruption. Every interest group seems to have a special loophole or cozy shelter in the Internal Revenue Code. This is the main reason why we have tens of thousands of pages of tax rules. Nobody understands them, but lots of people in Washington get rich because of them, and lots of politicians fatten their campaign coffers as a result. Imagine how much less vice there would be in D.C. if the IRS was replaced by a simple and transparent tax system that treated everybody equally. No wonder the Beltway bandits don't like the flat tax. $3.5 trillion of spending, massive regulatory authority, a loophole-ridden tax code. These are the reasons why there are so many looters and moochers in Washington. Government has become far too big. We have degenerated from the great system set up by our founding fathers to a, a racket that works for the benefit of the political class. The main lesson from this video is that influence peddling and other sleazy behavior in Washington is the symptom. The underlying disease is excessive government. So instead of passing laws that address the symptom, wouldn't it make more sense to actually treat the disease? Let's answer that question with an analogy. The next time you read about some new proposal to reform the ethics regulations, the campaign finance laws, or the lobbying rules, 
Think about pressing on a balloon. The more you squeeze in one spot, the more you expand the balloon in another spot. This is why legislation to clean up Washington is destined to fail. If you really want to reduce sleaze, the best option, perhaps the only solution, is to reduce the size and power of government. On behalf of the Center for Freedom and Prosperity, thanks for watching. We count on you to be the messengers of liberty, so please share this video widely.